we come to the role of echocardiography, I think it's very important to also understand the pathomechanism for the heart. Because eventually what happens is that the right heart function will deteriorate and the patients will become highly symptomatic. But starting out, the first problem we have is we have some form of obstruction of the vascular bed. And this obviously changes the afterload of the right ventricle. So at the beginning of the cascade, what we have is we have an increase in right ventricle afterload. And then a number of different things happen, ranging from right ventricle dilatation to a decrease in cardiac output of the right ventricle. We have a drop in systolic blood pressure and eventually shock and even death. So keep this in mind, but also keep in mind that not every pulmonary embolism shows all of these features and that there might be subtle abnormalities that you might not even pick up with echocardiography. So when you look at a patient who has pulmonary embolism, you have to focus firstly on the right ventricle. And what you would usually see primarily is a dilatation of the right ventricle and a decrease in right ventricle function. Why is this so? Well, the main reason is that the right ventricle is not adapted to an acute rise in afterload and therefore simply fails.